Okay, this is Brother Brendan Judah Matt Duffy representing the Solid Foundation International Ministries. That's Solid Foundation International Ministries. S F I M S F I M, and um, uh, we're going to get in today, basically speaking on the Holy Spirit. Okay, what is the Holy Spirit concerning the Bible? What is the Holy Spirit? All right, what is the Holy Ghost? What is the Comforter? What is the Holy Spirit? How does the Holy Spirit make you feel? How does the Holy Spirit make you react? What is the Holy Spirit? This is the question. What is the Holy Spirit? And I know a lot of you may know um, um, about the Holy Spirit, but some of you may not know what the Holy Spirit is. Now, for a lot of you people that may think you know of the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about you two-third niggas, you Negroes, you Hispanics, you Native Americans, basically who are the Israelites the Bible speaks of, because believe it or not, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans um, of North, Central, and South America, they are the biblical Israelites that the Bible speaks of, okay? And you are the real Jews. You are the God. You are God's chosen people. You may think that you know the Holy Spirit because a lot of you so-called Negroes, you niggas in the church, you've been taught that the Holy Spirit is such as this. I'm going to show you some clips because you've been taught this, man, and uh, we need to address these things. Now, this is Benning Hen, and the title is Fire Falling on Kids. Now, this is what most of you believe that the Holy Spirit is. I'm going to show you this. Let me skip through the video because I don't want to prolong any time. You niggas, you Negroes, you may think this is the Holy Spirit, but this is not the Holy Spirit according to the Bible. I want to show you this. Look at this video. Look really good because this lesson is going to be very vital to your understanding. Get your pens out, get your papers out, and take notes. This lesson is dealing with the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit according to God's word, according to the Bible? Most of you have been led to believe that this is the Spirit. I just, I'm just showing you what's going on today in these modern pagan ass Christian churches. See, that's what most of you been have been believe, believe, have been led to believe that the Spirit is. Look at that, man. That's not the Holy Spirit. This is what's going on into the church today. These Pentecostal churches. You see that madness? He's being electrocuted by God's power. Do you really believe that? This young man is being electrocuted by God's power. And look at these dumb asses. Fire on you. Pick him up. That's madness, man. We're gonna rebuke that. Fire on we rebuke Pick that in the spirit of your heart by Shimmy Hall Shai. Hamash y'all. See, this is what Fire see, look you. at that, man. Look at all sisters, man. They've been deceived, man. Myself. This is what television does. Look at that. Deceiving the masses of the people. Television is powerful. And if you're not careful, man, you're going to be deceived by the devil. This so-called white man is the goddamn devil. And what he does is he set up these fake-ass pastors to mislead the masses of the people, man. But we're not falling for this dumb-ass, wicked-ass activity. Okay? That they promote in these Christian churches. This is not the Holy Spirit, man. This is disturbing my spirit, man. Because it's not of the Holy Spirit. And we got to address this. And we're going to check this up, man. Immediately, we're about to get into the scriptures. So all praise praises due to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shine. And I'm going to show you the Holy Spirit is not this according to the Bible, man. Straight up. Let's get straight into the chapters. We want to give all praises due to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to you elders that's preaching the truth in sincerity and you in the Achium that's keeping the Sabbaths, edifying the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay. For Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, we say the water Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, the rock of Thy Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. He gets the glory. None else. Let's get into the lesson. So, what is the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? We're going to show you what is the Holy Spirit. Spirit, according to the scriptures and not what we believe and not what we've been taught in the churches. I'm going to show you some more video clips, 
but we need to get into the scriptures because we don't want to prolong any more any long any more time. Um, so what is the spirit? Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, so we're gonna start off with uh Romans 7 12. Romans 7 12. Um, but before we start out with Romans 7 12. Let's go to St. John 14 and uh, 26. Right here. This is St. John 14, 26. What is the Holy Spirit? That's the topic. Don't lose focus. The topic is what? What is the Holy Spirit concerning the Bible? All right. St. John 14, 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said it to you. So this is what Yahashua is saying. He said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, that's another word for the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. You may see someone say the comforter. Someone may say the Holy Ghost. Someone say the Holy Spirit. So we're going to go into two and break down and show you what comforter means. Once again, this lesson is dealing with the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? So now it says uh, the, the Comforter, right there. What does Comforter mean in the Greek dictionary? Because the New Testament was written in Greek. So what does Comforter mean? If we can get the pronunciation, um, Strong's G thirty-eight seventy-five, Parakletas, Parakletas, Parakletas. Parakletas. That's what comforter means. Parakletas. Parakletas. That's what it means. And it's the Greek in the Greek dictionary, 3875, or some may say 3875. Comforter. And it simply means this. Okay. In the Greek dictionary. Summon call to one side. Call to one's aid. One who pleads another cause before a judge, a pleader, counsel. For defense, legal assistant of, of an advocate, one who pleads another cause with one and an and, and intercessor. It says of Christ and his exaltation at God's right hand, pleading with God the Father for the pardon of all sins. That's he's, that's that's a mediator or known as a comforter too. It says in the in the widest sense, a helper, seconder, or aider, assistance. Let's look at I. It says of the Holy Spirit that's destined to take the place of Christ with the apostles after his ascension to the Father. So this is the one we're looking for right here. This is the one we are looking for right here. I, at the bottom, the comforter of the Holy Spirit, destined to take the place of Christ with the apostles after his ascension to the Father to lead them to a deeper knowledge of the gospel of the truth and give them divine strength needed to enable them to undergo trials, persecutions on behalf of the divine kingdom. So that's what the Holy Spirit does, man. If you don't know nothing, if you don't know about the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, some may say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is destined to take the place of Christ with the apostles. Now, what does it do? The Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter, it leads you to a deeper knowledge, man, of the gospel of the truth. It shows you deep, deep, dark sayings of the Holy Bible. It reveals to you deep, dark sayings that others may not be able to reveal to you. It gives them divine strength and it enables them to undergo trials. So that's the comforter, man. It shows you things that man can't show you, man. Okay. So it's the comforter is like a, 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 a second person, man. So we can see St. John 14, 26. It says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So the comforter actually teaches you all things, man. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It teaches you all things. It shows you things that you've never seen before. It shows you things that you've never been edified on. It shows you things that you have never been basically uh it shows you things that you have never basically experienced, man. That's what the comforter does. It's a teacher. It teaches you things. It's a guide. It's, it aids you. You know what I'm saying? It, it it guides you. You know, it's like a beacon. It guides and directs your path. That's what a comforter does. So it teaches you all things and it bring also bring all things. It also bring all things to your remembrance. It brings all things to your remembrance. You know what I'm saying? You may be quoting a particular verse or something, 
Um, and then um, you might not remember how exactly how that verse is quoted in, in the Bible. Then all of a sudden, it, it, it all of a sudden, boom! Now you can quote the whole verse. You know what I'm saying? You can break it down. That's the company. You may be talking to a friend or something. You know, and you may be looking for that particular verse in the Bible that you you trying to bring to his understanding, and then you can't. And, and for some reason that verse won't come to mind, then all of a sudden, boom, that verse comes to mind. You know, that's the comforter, man. That's the Holy Spirit, man. Okay, it brings things to your remembrance. When you're trying to when you're trying to break down a verse in the Bible, and you may not know how to do it, and all of a sudden, this, when this Holy Spirit comes, you say, Oh, okay, I remember now. Oh, it, it, oh, it's, oh, it's, it's St. John such and such. I turn to this book. Oh, it's, it's, it's the book of Colossians. It's, it's in chapter fifth. It's in, it's in chapter two. You know what I'm saying? It, whatever, whatever you may be trying to break down concerning your, your knowledge to someone. And if you don't have, basically, you might forget, according to the Bible, how to, how to say it directly. And then the comforter will come along and, 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 and come along and, and aid you and help you to remember those verses and those scriptures, man. It bring it bring things to your remembrance whatsoever I, whatsoever basically that you may be desired to to edify a person on that's what the comforter is okay and, and that's what the Holy Spirit does bring things to your remembrance it also teaches you things too and we're gonna look at a couple more verses on that now so uh we're gonna show you something else concerning um st John 16 verse 7. So that's St. John 16, verse 7. 16, verse 7. This is all dealing with the Holy Spirit. 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for, this is Yahweh speaking who the world called Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. So Yahweh was basically telling his disciples, if I don't go away, then the comforter will not come. Okay, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So you also I say, man, it's expedient. It's certain that I must leave. I must return. I must go away. I must go back to the spirit world. If I don't do this, then the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, which is the comfort, he will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. See? And um, that's what he was telling the disciples. So it was expedient for Yahushua. To go away. So it was basically ordained for him to be put to death by the hands of the Romans so that the comforter would come. You know, he stayed on the earth for the days and for the nights after his death, after his crucifixion, after his resurrection. He stayed with his disciples for the days and for the nights. But after those 40 days and 40 nights, he ascended into the heavens on the right hand side of the most high. And that's basically when he sent the comforter to the disciples after his death. Okay, I'm just showing you things concerning the comforter. I'm gonna show you too. Um, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you too. Uh, something else. Let's look at uh Saint John fifteen twenty. Saint John. Uh, I'm gonna say fifteen twenty six. Let's check that out. Dealing with the comforter. Let's check that out. Saint John fifteen twenty six. See what that says. Uh, Saint John fifteen twenty six. It says, uh, but when the comforter is come. Whom I was saying unto you from the Father, okay, even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. So the comforter shall testify of me. Now we read how the comforter basically teach you things concerning St. John 14, 26. We read how the comforter teach you things and bring things to your remembrance. So, so you see right here in John 15, 26, he said, but when the comforter is come, it says, whom I was saying unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Now, we're just showing you things dealing with the Holy Spirit concerning this lesson. We're just showing you things dealing with the Comforter. And the, uh, some may call it the Holy Spirit. Or some may call it the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Spirit concerning the Scriptures, man? Okay? Because we told you, once again, it's not this. That's a goddamn fool, man. Look at that idiot. Look at that moron. Look at that lunatic, man. That's not the spirit. See, now you Hebrews, you real Hebrews, man. You can sit back and now 
You can thank the Most High, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, that He brought you and delivered you out of those Christian churches. You can see, man, thank. I thank Yahweh Shai, man. I say all praises due to Yahweh Shai. Thank Him for taking me out of those stupid ass, wicked ass, satanic, pagan institutions that you see right here, man. This guy's a goddamn fool, man. This is nowhere in the Bible. That's that, that's not the Holy Spirit. We're going to address that because that's not the Holy Spirit. Take a look. It's a damn fool, man. Let's get back to the list. Really? Is that the comforter? Is that the Holy Spirit? Is that, is that the Holy Ghost? I don't think so, man. I don't think so. I'm going to show you something else. Now, we read and um Saint John 16 and 7 that Yahweh started telling the disciple that it was expedient for him to leave because if he didn't leave, the comforter would not come. So let's go to Acts chapter uh one. This is dealing with what? This topic, this lesson is dealing with the Holy Spirit. So let's go to Acts chapter one, and we're gonna just kind of browse through it to show you uh basically. The time when Yahweh shot left, who the world called Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you the time when Yahweh shot left. Um, let me see. Let's go to Acts chapter 1, verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. So Yahweh shot was telling his disciples that John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with what? The Holy Ghost, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. That's what Yahweh shot was telling his disciples, man. You're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. That holy, that same Holy Spirit that's going to teach you all things and bring things to your remembrance. Acts 1 and 6. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Because they thought he was coming to restore restore the, the kingdom again. But this is what Yahashua said in Acts 1 and 7. He said unto them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father have put in his own power. Now, Acts 1 and 8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So he said, you're going to receive power. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, you're going to receive power, man. He says, and you shall be witnesses to me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and, the, and, and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. See? Now, when he said these things, Acts 1 and 9, when he said these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And the cloud received him out of their sight. So you can see right there, the Most High was taken up by a cloud. And um, that cloud is simply right there is a, a, a so-called UFO. The so-called white man, uh, the UFOs that the, so the white man calls the chariots of God UFO UFOs. And the chariots of God is known as clouds. So basically, Yahweh was taken up in a so-called UFO, all right, which is which is known as a cloud. And, and, the, and the disciples received him out of their sight. So when you, when your hour shot was taken away, we already know, according to St. John 16 and 7, remember what he said. He said, it's, it's expedient that I go away. It's expedient that I go away because if I don't go away, the comforter won't come. So your hour shot in Acts, the first chapter, is being taken away. It's letting you know that he's being taken away in Acts, the first chapter. Now, it's just a matter of time for that comforter to come down, which is the Holy Spirit on this, his disciples. And like I say, when you read Acts chapter 2, we're not going to read Acts chapter 2. When you read Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came down on his disciples and uh, his disciples began to speak in various tongues. Now, if you want to see the lesson concerning uh, speaking in tongues, just look at the lesson concerning uh, speaking in tongues. Look at that lesson. It, it'll tell you basically, it'll, it'll give you a, a, a overview of Acts chapter 2 and what is tongues according to the Bible, what exactly tongues is. According to the Bible, just look at that video because we're not going to go in Acts chapter 2. But we know that his disciples received the spirit after he left and then they received the gifts of tongues. But if you want to know what the gifts of tongues is according to the Bible, check out the speaking in tongue video, man. Okay, so let's continue on. So now what is the spirit, man? What is the spirit? Let's go to Romans 7 and 12. Romans 7 and 12. We're going to show you according to the Bible what is the spirit because it's not what they do in these modern day churches okay romans 7 and 12 it says wherefore the law is holy so what is the law the law is holy okay wherefore the law is holy and the commandment is holy so keeping god laws makes you holy 
keeping God laws and commandments makes you holy. And it's okay. So you see that Romans 7 and 12. For, so the law is what? The law is holy. And the law is what? And the commandment. And the commandment is holy. So the laws and statutes and commands is holy. Now, let's go to Romans 7 and 14. It says, for we know that the law, the law is spiritual. So the law is spiritual. So otherwise, how can you claim in the church to have the Holy Spirit when you're telling me that the laws are done away with? That don't make any damn sense. Because when you talk to a lot of pastors today, they tell you that the laws are done away with. Yeah, they tell you that. They tell you that the laws are done away with in these churches. Oh, we're not under the law. So if you're not under the law, then you shouldn't be catching the Holy Spirit then. What you claim to be the Holy Spirit in the church. Okay, so that you can see right there is all a damn joke, man. So Romans 7, 14 say we know that the law is spiritual. So what is the spirit? The law, keeping God laws. When you keep God laws, the Holy Spirit come upon you and show you things. When you keep the laws of the Most High, the Holy Spirit come upon you and show you things that you have never been shown. The Holy Spirit reveals to you things. The Holy Spirit basically uh, teach you all things and bring things to your remembrance when you keep the laws of God. For we know that the law is spiritual, man. And we also know that the law is holy according to Romans 7 and 12. So you can put, if the law is holy, holy spirit. See that? Romans 7, 12, holy. Romans 7, 14, spirit. The law is holy. Keeping God's laws is holy. Romans 7, 12. And keeping God's laws, Romans 7, 14, is spirit. So all together you have holy spirit. So what? So how do you receive the Holy Spirit? By keeping the commandments. By keeping the commandments. Because the commandments is holy as well. So you receive the Holy Spirit by keeping the commandments. Because why? The law is spiritual. So that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not this, y'all. Keeping God's commandments is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not this. I'm going to show you something else, y'all, because they claim this is the spirit in church. See, that they claim that's the spirit, but that's not the spirit. I'm going to show you something else. Look at this damn foolishness. This is something else they claim is the spirit. This is a goddamn shame, man. That's nowhere in the Bible. That's not the spirit. You see that? That's a goddamn demon on these people, man. That's a demon on the masses of the people. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's a demon. They can't even see. Blind, man. Blind Israelites. How long are we going to continue to do this shit, man? How long are we going to continue to go to church and, and be a part of this pagan satanic activity, man? That's not no damn spirit. That's not the Holy Ghost. That's not the spirit, man. Look at that. Doing all that in the church and then get out doing the same damn thing back in the streets again. Look at that. Look at that madness. Look at that. That's a damn demonic spirit that has possession over this girl's body, man. I'm not making this up. Demons are real. Spirits are real. Spiritual powers and principalities are real, man. This ain't no goddamn commercial, man. Y'all boys better wake up. You females better wake up, man. Come to the knowledge of the truth. Because Christianity is a goddamn joke, and it's about time the era of Christianity is demolished and it's over. That's not the Holy Spirit, man, that the Bible speaks on. And that's what we're trying to show you, man. We're going to show you what the Spirit is, man. Let's go to John, St. John 6.63. That ain't no spirit. You've been lied to. You've been taught that's the Spirit. That's not the spirit. St. John 6, 6 and 63. Let's read that. Let's take a look at that. We're going to prove all things with this Bible. It says, it is, this is St. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickened. Yeah, because the spirit changes you, man. The spirit shows you things and brings things to your remembrance. 
It's the spirit that quickens. It's the spirit that converts you and change you into the truth and get your mind renewed. The flesh profited nothing. The words, listen to this. This is what your heart shot said. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So what is spirit, man? So what is the spirit? What is spirit? God's word, man. Not what you just saw before your very eyes. It's not that. I'm going to show you something else. We're dealing with the Holy Spirit. What is the Spirit, man? What it is? We're dealing with this. Let's go to Acts 751. Let's go to Acts 751. Because this is when they was on the verge of stoning Stephen. When Stephen was stoned, he was killed. Acts 751. This is what Stephen told the unbelievers. This is what Stephen, Stephen told these Pharisees and these Sadducees, the ones that didn't believe in this gospel. Acts 751. Stephen said, Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do. Let's, 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 let's blow that up a little bit. I want y'all to see this. Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in hearts. This is Acts 751. Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist. He said, You unbelievers. That don't believe in this gospel and this truth and that scorn and scoffer and you don't believe in this truth you always resist the holy ghost as your fathers did so do ye stephen said that you resist the holy ghost now what's the holy what the holy ghost stephen was talking about was it this was it that was it that I don't think so. That's a that's a that's bullshit. What Stephen spoke of was not of that. We're gonna show you what it is, what Stephen spoke of. Stephen said, You always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. Acts 752. He's talking to these unbelievers. Which of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted? Because they fathers killed these unbelieving Pharisees, Sadducees, these unbelieving people. Their, their fathers persecuted all of the believers of Yahweh Shah, man. And he said, which of these prophets have, you, have not your fathers persecuted? They have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. They have shown them of whom ye have been, now the betrayers and murderers, Acts 753, who have received the law by the disposition of angels. So they received what? Who have received the law. The fathers that were persecuted, that they slain, okay? That they that they persecuted the, the, the prophets that spoke of the coming of the just one, okay? They received the law by the disposition of angels, okay? They received the law by the disposition of angels. So you can see that the the, the unbelieving people that step that Stephen was speaking to, he said, You stiff net and uncircumcised heart and ears, you resist the Holy Ghost. You resist the Holy Ghost. And what is that? What is that? Who have received the law? So what is the Holy Ghost? The law. What is the Holy Ghost? The law. They resist the Holy Ghost. They resist. The unbelieving people resist the Holy Ghost. They resist the Holy Ghost, which is what? Who have received the law by the disposition of angels. Okay? And not kept it. They didn't keep the law. And not keeping the law caused them to what? Resist the Holy Ghost. So what is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is the laws. When you keep God's laws, then you receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? Then you receive the comfort and he will show you all things and bring things to your remembrance. But you can see in these churches, they're not keeping one damn law. Let me show you something else, man. I want to show you something else. This is the goddamn shame, man. But they claim they have the Holy Spirit. They claim they had the Holy Spirit in the church, right? But they ain't keeping one law in the Bible. You can see all the women in that church, their heads is uncovered. Well, uh, some women heads are not uncovered. Some women heads are covered, but the majority women heads are covered. Okay. Uh, well, so like you. The women in the church, most of their heads is uncovered, but some of the women heads are covered. You can see there's nobody keeping the, the laws of God because first of all, they have a Sunday service when the Bible tells you to keep the seventh day. They don't have no fringes. The pastor is not growing his beard out. Okay. No beards. Okay. They're not keeping the holy days. They keep all these Christian ass holidays. 
But how can they have the law? How can they be? How, how can they? Because when you keep God laws, then the Holy Spirit will come upon you. They're not keeping one damn law in the Bible, but yet it said they are so sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit, man. This is a damn demonic ass demon on these people, man. You see that? That's madness, man. That's madness. Let me skip through it. I'm going to show you this. This don't make no damn sense. This is horrible, man. Look at that. Calling on the wrong damn name. His name is not Jesus. There's no J in the Hebrew alphabet or language or sound. The letter J is the newest letter in the alphabet. His name is not Jesus. That's his name was not Greek. He was a Hebrew from the tribe of Judah. Okay? But you so filled with the damn spirit. You damn fool. Look at that shit. That's a satanic demon on this woman, man. This type of shit pisses me off, man. We've been cooning, we've been shucking and jiving for the longest. We've been doing this shit for centuries in the church. Who gonna break this damn cycle, man? Who gonna break this cycle? Who gonna stand in the gap and break this cycle, man? It's sad because we've been doing this for so many years. We haven't known the truth for so many years, man. Israel been doing this shit from day one, man. Who gonna stand in the gap and show these people the truth? Who gonna rise up the 12 tribes of Jacob? Because this is the goddamn shame, man, according to the Bible. Because nobody in the Bible did that. And I'm going to show you this, man. I don't give a damn how long this lesson takes. If you want the truth and if you want to be edified and if you're concerned on getting the kingdom, then you're going to stay here and you're going to take notes and you're going to listen, man, and open your spirit up to receive the truth, man. If your patience is thin, then the hell with you, man. You two-third niggas. But this has to stop, man. Now you see that? You see that? They claim that's the spirit concerning the Bible. That's what they say the Holy Spirit is. But it's not, man. Now, we're going to go back to Benny Hinn. And we're going to show you because they they, 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 they they get infestated with these demons. And then they go to acting like a bunch of lunatics, maniacs. They go to running around the church. Doing, doing just, just spazzing out. Claiming that's the spirit. Now, I'm going to show you something else. I got to show you this before we close the lesson now. I got to show you this, and then we're going to close the lesson out because I told you guys that we were going to deal with this, man. First of all, he's an East Indian. Look at him. He's an East Indian. God don't deal with East Indians. Benny Hinn is an East Indian. He's not an Israelite. So what the hell make you think that the Most High is dealing with him when the Bible tells you that he don't deal with no one with Israel? It's a goddamn joke, man. I want you to see this. All right. And we're going to give one more verse. We're going to give one more verse. See that? People falling out. Thinking that's of the Holy Ghost. That's not of the Holy Ghost. That's not of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to show you something else, too. Because we need to go back and we need to address this. You see this? Now, we've seen this early. This is the demonic demon. We're going to prove this with the scriptures. We're going to prove this with the scriptures. I'm, 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 going, I'm going into the scriptures. I'm going to Mark 9 and 20 prior to the scriptures. We're going to show you. You see that? He's being electrocuted by God's power. This young man is being electrocuted by God's power. Look at him. And they dumbass. Esau, this truth ain't for you anyway, man. It's, it ain't for you, man. All right, now we're going we gonna to deal with this because you seen how that guy fell out on the floor, wilding and squealing around like a damn psychopath. We're going to show you this, man. Mark 9 and 20. We're going to deal with it right now. We'll close the scriptures out.
We're going to deal with it right now. We're going to show you this. Just a little bit uh, more to go, and we'll be finished with this lesson, man. So we're going to show you this concerning Mark 9 and 20. Because Benny Hinn let him say, let him say that he was being electrocuted by God's power. That's a goddamn lie. Let me show you who, let me show you what was really going on. Okay? This is Mark 9 and 20. It says, this now I'm 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 just uh explaining I'm gonna explain this story. There was a uh a, 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 there was a certain man who had his little son had a demon on him, man. And it's just speaking in Mark 9 and 20 how this demon used to react in this in this guy's son. Now this 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 certain this certain father had a son that was his son was tainted with a demon. Now we gonna I'm, I'm gonna begin to read from Mark nine and twenty. They brought him into they brought him into him. So they brought the the demon out they brought the demonized child to your house, shot. And when he saw him straight straight away, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground. See this this the, the, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground, and he wallowed foaming. That's what exactly you just saw, man. You just saw that. You see that? Are you kidding me? Get the hell out of here, man. Let's go back to the scriptures. Let's read it again. Mark 9 and 20. And they brought him and took him. And when he saw him straight away, the spirit tear him. That old spirit tear him. Because when they do that shit in the church, they go to tearing open their clothes tearing open their suit coats sometimes they, they tear open they they they, they sometimes they, they they rip off their ties and he fell on the ground that's what they do they fall on the ground see they fall on the ground and they wallow and they start foaming that's what exactly they do in these damn Pentecostal churches mark 9 and 21 and he asked his father Yahweh Shah asked his, the, the the son's father how long is it ago since this came into him and the father he said of of a child so the father told you how it's been on him ever since he was a child. Mark 9 and 22. And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou can do anything, he said, have compassion on us and help us. So this father wanted Yahweh to heal his son from this demonic demon. Mark 9 and 23. And Yahweh said unto him, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Mark 9 and 24. And straight away, the father of the child cried and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thy unbelief. So he was crying on the behalf of his son because he wanted his son to be healed. Mark 9 and 25. Let's take a look at that. And when Yahweh saw the people come running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. What did Yahweh do? Yahweh rebuked the foul spirit. He rebuked the foul spirit. What did he say? Saying, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee. Come out of him and enter no more into him. Yahweh shall rebuke that foul spirit. So what type of spirit did he rebuke? The same foul spirit that fell upon this boy that caused him to do what? That same foul spirit that fell upon him and caused him to do and caused him to tear that spirit that tore him, that spirit that caused him to fall on the ground, that spirit that caused him to wallow on the ground, and that spirit that caused him to foam out his damn mouth. Yahweh shall rebuke it. How come they not rebuking the spirits in church like that? How come he's not rebuking it? How come they not saying that's a dumb and deaf spirit? Because they don't know the power in the spirit of Yahweh Shai. Because they too damn busy and uh, participating in satanic uh, activity. All right? They, they not rebuking these foul spirits. When Yahweh Shai saw that, Yahweh Shai rebuked that, man. When Yahweh Shai saw that type of spirit, he rebuked the foul spirit. He rebuked the foul spirit. Saying, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee not to come into him. He said, I charge thee not to come. I charge thee not. I charge thee, come out of him and enter into him no more. And the spirit cried, Mark 9, 26. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead as much that many said he is dead, but he wasn't. And Yahweh Shah took him by the hand and lifted him up. So you can see right there, man, Yahweh Shah, according to the scriptures, Call this spirit a dumb and deaf spirit. But look at this. Look at this Jake right here, man. Look at this unsophisticated woman right here, man. Look at this lost sheep right here. Look at this dry bone right here. Can't even tell the false from the real, the real from the fake, satanic activity from spiritual activity. They haven't been shown the truth, man. Don't even know a damn thing according to the scriptures.
That's a dumb and deaf spirit on these people, man. How come he ain't rebuking the spirit? He's a fucking damn demon, man. He's a devil, man. He's been set up to deceive you people, man. You can't even see the truth, what's going on. But you claim that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit nowhere in the Bible did someone like that. So I hope you got clear edification on what is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is when you keep the most high laws. The Holy Spirit is when you keep the statutes and commandments. And if you ain't keeping the commandments and you too damn busy saying the law done away with, you don't have the Holy Spirit. You a damn devil. You a demon. You a two-third. And you're going to be destroyed, man. Okay? So we want to say all praise is due to y'all by Shimmy Howard Shire. Once again, this is Brother Brandon Judah McDuffie representing the Solid Foundation International Ministries. All praises. I want to say shalom.